do anything else, I thought I'd just get this um, chain tensioner off of here and this little post for the chain case itself. I've got a half inch spanner for the back here of this post. And it's pretty stiff. It's a bit rusty actually. One of the few rusty bits that I've seen on this machine so far. And it looks like it's gonna come out of there. So it's just the um this is the solid deck machine, so it's got a slightly different tensioner to the twin rails. So that just lifts out of there like that. Just wanted to show you that's the little plastic tensioner off the twin. Basically there's a bolt that goes through there, but um, getting that bolt out of this plastic was next to impossible. It had to be unscrewed. I wasn't sure if it was sort of fixed in there somehow or what, but um, maybe I actually gave it a whack in the end, I can't remember, but um, looking in here I can see there's some definite um, some marks where the threads cut into the plastic, so it's um, it's on there quite well. It takes a little bit of um, a little bit of thinkering to get it out. So right here we've got the the, ch the two chain tensioners. This one's off the twin rail machine. The chain runs runs along the top of the of this thing, and it basically sort of clamps down against the frame of the machine and moves up and down to adjust the chain tension as you need it. This is the chain tensioner on the solid deck. It's um, obviously slightly different. Um, this cylindrical part doesn't actually spin as you you might expect it to. Um, I guess the the idea is that um, it's sort of consumable to an extent. So when a when a section of it wears out, you can unscrew that nut, um, rotate this plastic bit around, um, and tighten it back up again. So it's good to go. So I think on I think on my machine from memory it was sitting like this, and obviously it hasn't been rotated for quite a while. So the um, the chain's been bearing down and deformed the the plastic quite a bit to the point where it's actually cracked in there in the in the center section. Um, to be honest, I'll probably be upgrading this to to use George Bond Mod's um, sprocket based um, tensioner. It's a metal affair that. Um, replaces this. It looks like it will be a worthy upgrade um, given what's happening to this thing and that it's going to probably need replacing anyway. You can see that crack possibly um, runs right through. So this bit of plastic is pretty old. It means replacing at the very least. Um, that little L or U-shaped leg is the um, for the chain case so I'll need to hang on to that but um, we shall see what happens to the rest of it. Alright, I'm going to try and get this guy off of here. Obviously the chain's still on. I'm going to try and keep that chain together just to make life a bit easier. A um, couple little nuts and bolts holding everything together there. Just taking that one off the um, little yoke for the, um, for the clutch cable up there. And these ones are pretty loose. So this slides up and down on these bolts so that you can adjust your chain tension. So that's the little yoke for the clutch cable. Chains come off here. And that whole bit looks apart. So what you can see back there is the cog that's attached to this plate that contains your clutch cork. It's on this guy that will come apart. This whole thing just knocks out. If you take a hammer and bang that through, we'll do that later. And um, there's a bearing inside of that as well. I just wanted to review the way this drive clutch goes together. So there's quite a few parts sitting inside this. It's somewhat deceiving and somewhat hard to envision without the parts diagram and also without having taken one apart. 
So, I'm not sure if you can see it very well, but there's a, a little pin that's um, sitting inside of the sprocket. So if I lift that out, just like so. So there's the outer sprocket, there's a bearing, and then there's a center bushing with that little pin sitting right in there, um, in the center of that um, bearing. And that pin locates in the slot of this post, which is welded to this plate. Once you've got this off, you can remove your corks, of course, and clean this up, and then pull the bearing off and give this back this back plate to clean up in a paint or whatever you want to do to it. When you're putting this back together, if you're just playing with it, just make sure you're lining lining things up. There's a lot of bearings moving around together, and for instance, if you try and sort of spin that, it moves, and this one's just so caked on with grease that everything's sort of pretty, pretty sticky, but um, they can be a little bit, I mean, there you can see it's, you can't really get it together, so if you force that, you're going to probably do some damage to that pin. So you just need to make sure that your alignment is spot on before you try and pop those back together. So just a little note for reassembly or if you're keeping your bits and bobs together. So I wanted to give this a good clean up, replace this bearing. I did know from the from the diagrams that um, that there was this lip um, on the back side of this sprocket that I needed to account for. My approach, not necessarily the best approach, but I had this counterweight sitting around, which was about the size of this sprocket. So that was sitting there with the bearing inside, coming up from underneath. And what I did was grab a piece of wood and a hammer and gave it a few decent taps to start moving that bearing down into this um, into this section, at which point it started to come free and I was able to pull it out. All right, so I've had a closer look at this bearing. Um, in our handy little diagram, we can see that center conical section with the pin fits inside that bearing and it's got a little lip on the end of it um, that goes towards the outside. So I sat this thing between two blocks, put that block on top and gave it a whack to try and push this center conical section with the lip downwards and out. And this is what I've ended up with so far. Probably help if I'd put a little bit of oil in there or something, but I haven't. This bearing's getting chucked. I'm not too worried about it, but I definitely want to preserve the section in the middle. So, got the old persuader, block of wood to protect the metal work, and I'm just going to keep whacking that. I'm sitting on the concrete floor here to take as much of that um, energy as possible, and I think that's definitely shifted down a little bit. You can see it's coming out a little bit further. I still got a little bit further to go. All right, so I've got my um, little socket here. This is a 9 16 It looks like it's going to fit over that little section quite nicely. Hopefully not do too much damage. So I'm just going to sit that like so. I've got my rubber-faced mallet, and I'm going to give it a few gentle taps and see what happens. I've popped some oil down there as well, just for good measure. So this is my, uh, what is it, 19, 16 mil oak dowel. It's quite a long one. I was thinking it might serve the purpose because it fits in there quite nicely. So I'm just going to hop down to the other end with the hammer and give it a few whacks. And there we go. That's all it took. So that's our old bearing and that is what we were after. The little cent center section and that pin in the center seems to be sitting in there fairly securely so that's good so what i'm going to do now is try and get this plate and sprocket off of this plate back here there's that post running right through the middle of it through a bearing so i'm going to what i've got here is a couple pieces of wood and i'm going to rest that plate on those two blocks as best I can and give that post a bit of a whack 
and try and drive that plate out from the center of that um, front plate. So we'll give it a few whacks and see what happens. So you can see that's moving moving down there slowly. You can see the bearing starting to show through, so that's normally sitting within that sprocket. Keep going. Not quite there. I think I've got a little bit more room before I hit the floor. Again, I'm just working on the concrete of the, um, the garage just for a little bit of extra bearing pressure. And that'll do it. So, bearing was sitting in in there like so. Pop that out, we can give that a good clean up now, get the cork off there and give that a good clean. And the bearing itself is sitting on that post still. My next task is to try and get this bearing off of this post. It's um, It doesn't have far to travel because there's actually a, a raised section to this post. So it's really just got to pop up off of there just a tiny bit and then it should start moving. Unfortunately, the legs of my puller don't quite don't quite fit in there to make this an easy job so it um, takes a little bit of extra thinking to get it off. Um, what I've done so far is squirt a little bit of penetrating oil around that shaft and let that soak in for a few minutes just to try and make life a little bit easier. In an ideal world I'd have a little, there'd probably be enough room to slip a little sheet of, a um, little plate of metal under there just to get a little bit of extra purchase on there with the um, with the gear puller. Basically just going to try and lever This sprocket's kind of tucked away back here under that other um, clutch plate when the chains are on there anyway so I found it's easiest to approach this one with a slightly different technique. Um, so what I've got is a very large nut. This is a 13 16th um, thingy majiggy that I'm going to pop on there. And that's the biggest one I've got, but it actually fits. It's probably actually a spark plug um, socket, but um, it fits on there quite nicely, so I'm going to use it. And I've also got my big long screwdriver, and I'll show you what I'm going to do with that. Alright, so I'm just around behind the back of the machine here. What I'm trying to show you is this little hole back here. Got my big screwdriver, and I'm going to pop it right in that hole, and you can see it's bearing up against the frame of the mower. When I start to loosen off that bolt, the whole mower wants to shift forward against my exertion. Um, see. You can see it's spinning a little bit, but um, that screwdriver is just holding everything in place. I'm being quite gentle, so the um, didn't actually bother blocking out that um, the shaft of that driver against the frame. I'm sure it'll be fine. And it's coming. I'll show you what happens if I take that out. The whole thing just moves forward and it's quite frustrating until you can immobilize it. That's one of the easiest ways to do it. There you go. And that's off. On the last machine I did this sprocket was on here extremely tightly. Let's see how we go with this one. It feels like it's pretty firm on there, firmly on there as well. So I'll get the gear puller on that sprocket on the front one. And we'll see how this puller configuration is going to fit. It's not quite long enough. In this case, I've got quite a lot of thread on this center bit here. So that can come out like that. Too far. And we can wind it back in a touch. Now 
Now this um, rear shaft doesn't have a little dimple in it like the cutter does. So I've just tried to position that, the point of that thing, right in the middle. And we'll see how we go. It might slip off, but we'll see. So again, you can see that starting to slip off quite nicely. Just what we want. There's no way I could have moved that with my hands. And I'm not applying a lot of pressure here. I mean, it's got just a tiny bit. Even when I was starting it, just um, just a tiny little bit. I can turn that with my hand even now, just to get the leverage that I need. There we go. That's our drive sprocket. And another woodruff key. And I'm glad that came out very easily because the twin rail that was stuck in there and it was never going to move and I completely butchered that back shaft to the point where I've had to get a new slot cutting it. Mm -hmm.